Coming up, Jonathan goes deep to earn his Trimix certification. Welcome to Jonathan Bird's Blue World. Recreational scuba diving takes place at depths less than 130 feet. Most of my diving is actually shallower than that because shallow water has more light and more marine life. But there's another reason that divers generally stay shallow. Scuba divers usually breathe compressed air, which is 79% nitrogen. And nitrogen is a narcotic gas. At the surface, it's harmless. But as we get deeper, the nitrogen makes a diver feel drunk or lightheaded, a condition known as nitrogen narcosis. As the depth increases, the diver becomes increasingly impaired. For most divers, going deeper than 150 feet on air is downright dangerous. The solution is found in another gas, helium. Helium is inert like nitrogen, but it's not narcotic. So by substituting some of the nitrogen in air with helium, we can dive much deeper without nitrogen narcosis. Blends of gas containing oxygen, nitrogen, and helium are known in the diving world as Trimix, and it requires special training to use. Which explains why Todd and I have come to off-the-wall adventures in Lakeland, Florida. I'm taking a Trimix class with Doug Ebersole, a world-famous technical diving instructor who happens to be a cardiologist in his spare time. Hey, Doug. How you doing? Good to see you. Good, well, good to see hey, you, man. Nice to see you. Hey, Todd. How you doing? Good to see you, Todd. All right. Todd. Nice. All right. Garrett. How are doing? This is nice Garrett. Hey, Welcome nice. to Off the Wall Adventures. Thanks. Thanks for We're excited to be here. All right. Well, let me give you a little bit of a tour. All right. Let's go. Off the Wall Adventures is one of the most impressive dive shops I've ever seen with a massive selection of gear. Out back, they have a big classroom for instruction a parrot named Maui, and a training pool with an almost 12-foot deep end. They have multiple compressors, blend nitrox and trimix, as well as a large rental department. Doug and I start in the classroom reviewing some of the math and theory behind trimix diving and dive planning. Over 0.79, because that's what we're breathing right now, yep. equals the equivalent narcotic depth plus 33 we'll do it in feet rather than meters we got a plan we're gonna be 30 minutes on the bottom we're gonna do 30 minutes of deco it'll be a one hour dive time boom everything goes as planned that's the goal so if our time to surface gets close to 30 i don't care where we are in the dive plan we need to end the dive and start coming up it's your characteristics are and how much they're going to change for 40s versus 80s and so on and so on and i'll send you all that stuff so you have. after that it's time to start assembling our kiss sidewinder rebreathers I always have my checklist on my phone. Next, Doug shows me how to use the helium analyzer, which confirms we have the right blend in our tanks. There you go. And you'll see it'll equalize itself here in a second. A little bit more. So we'll get there. Yep. Uh, so let's go ahead and mark the tank. So we, we mark it 275. Once everything is tested and ready to go, we're ready for our first day of training. The next morning, we take a nice drive up to Ocala, an absolutely beautiful part of Florida. After we get off the main road, 
we follow Doug's directions in search of our first dive site. Where are we? <laughs> so is it that house? I think it's... Paradise Springs. This privately owned sinkhole is a perfect place for training in clear, calm water. We head on down to the dock to check out the conditions before we get started. It looks crystal clear. We're a go to stage the tanks and start suiting up. Doug has enlisted the help of Benjamin Woodill and Jorge Borgeno with the class. Yeah, honey, I'm going to the end. We'll do buoyancy check, we'll do bubble checks with each other. So my signal for bubble checks is this, so it'll be like, you bubble check me, or you bubble check Todd. Make sure no one's bleaking. After reviewing the dive plan, it's time to dive. drop my stage bottle on the training platform, and then we take a few minutes to get buoyancy and trim adjusted before starting the exercises. Because rebreathers are so quiet, you can talk to your dive buddies. And with helium in the mix, it becomes more entertaining. Later, I practice bailing out to the stage bottle and doing a bunch of exercises that are not visually interesting enough to include in the video. You may have wondered why I was carrying a surface marker buoy in a cave-like environment. We have to do open water stuff as well. So my first attempt at blowing an SMB is, well, <laughs> pretty bad. Next, I have to rescue Ben as if he has passed out. This exercise requires managing my own buoyancy as well as his at the same time, and it's definitely not easy. What'd you think? Well, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
But well, you look pretty good from our standpoint. I, you probably felt like you were alive. I felt bad, but I, you know. You look pretty good. The next day, we head on over to Buford Springs in Brooksville, located in a large state-owned wildlife reserve. It's a long walk from the parking area to the spring, so we brought some carts. The spring has beautiful clear water, but is known for having the second largest cavern in Florida with a maximum depth of 150 feet. Exactly what we need for day two of the training. Patented Ryan K. Cook technique. Once we're all ready, we drop down into the depths. First, we explore the massive cavern area for a while. But eventually, class has to start. Doug begins by running a reel across a section of the cavern. Then I clip my bail out to the line. With my eyes closed, I practice a blind drill to find and deploy my bailout without being able to see it. Like my cave diving instructor Brian K. Cook once told me, if you cheat by peeking, you're only cheating yourself of proper training. Even from 150 feet deep, we can still see the light from above. So we're still in a cavern, even though sometimes it looks like a cave environment. I have no perception of the depth, because even at 150 feet, I have no feeling of narcosis on Trimix. It's weird. <laughs> Doug wants me to practice that SMB maneuver again. We ascend up the slope. It goes a little better this time. Buford Springs has a little shelf at about 20 feet that makes a perfect place to hang out during decompression.
We watch the free divers as entertainment. Once we complete our decompression, we can head back to the surface. Yeah. Awesome. 160 feet and no narcosis. Pretty cool. That's crazy. On the final day of training, we head over to a pond that contains a very famous cave called Eagle's Nest. So it's pretty interesting because I'm about to do my hundredth cave dive and it just so happens that it's going to be at Eagle's Nest. And Eagle's Nest is kind of a famous dive site um, because it's really, really deep. And so there have been a few accidents here making it have kind of a reputation uh, because of the depth. But I'm in a Trimix class and we need some deep water. So we're going to do the training here. So I'm really excited because I'm doing my hundredth cave dive at Eagle's Nest. And am I a little nervous? Yes, I am. Our training actually takes place in the cavern zone of Eagle's Nest, so I'm not technically doing a cave dive. But there's just no way that I can be here in this cave for my 100th cave dive and not call it a cave dive. This will be my deepest dive on a rebreather. We're going to 200 feet. Trying to minimize the scum. After a dive briefing, it's time to visit a legendary cave. The water is a bit green, and we lose light quickly as we drop into the small hole in the bottom of the pond. At 60 feet, we emerge into the cavern and it just keeps going down within a huge room. At the bottom, we follow the slope down until we reach the maximum depth of the training, which is 200 feet. We turn, and on the way back up, we do more drills. One drill requires bailing out of the rebreather to open circuit while maintaining buoyancy, then proceed up to my stage bottle and make a gas switch.
Because of the depth, we have a long decompression and it takes two dives to get all the skills done. After 20 minutes of decompression, we head to the surface and I learn how to tow an unconscious diver through some green slime. So, what'd you think? Wow! It's huge inside! Massive. It's like Absolute the size massive. of a football field! And I can't believe that I could be that deep and I have no narcosis at all. Helium's great. Helium's great. And you talk like Donald Duck. Added bonus. <laughs> That's really awesome. Happy 100k dot. Oh, thank you! That was so sweet of you! The backstory here is that 100 cave dives is a very special celebration for a cave diver. I think because in the old days nobody lived that long. Probably. <laughs> but... Awesome. <laughs> Over four days, three springs and six dives, I earn my CCR Normoxic Trimix certification, which now qualifies me to dive Trimix. Although I love to learn and taking classes is fun just for the experience, I have a reason for seeking this certification. In the coming year, our team will be making some episodes going deeper into the blue world. Oh man, I need oxygen. I'm getting lightheaded. <sighs> yeah, baby, try mix. <laughs> <laughs>